Well, good morning, everyone. Jason with Happy Tales. We got Beth on the other side of the camera there. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Little impromptu. Today, we're going to talk about soft starts and soft starts for your um, air conditioning, what they are, how they work. Now, I'm going to go ahead and link this video up here. Uh, we did this guy here already into our Mach 8 and nothing against micro air they make a great product i think it was more of the probably my install but there's also a pcrv valve up there that i think caused havoc and the way that they said to wire this one up it didn't work um we actually started having a lot of problems um but again we'll talk about that one a little different what we are going to do is um we're going to do actually soft starts and we're going to kind of do an open box here for you. So we did order these off of Amazon. I do have the link down in the description. And we ordered two at a time because on this coach, we only have two Mach 8s. So in the box, this is what you're going to have as soon as you open it up. You're going to have some instructions here. And I am not going to do what I normally do and throw them behind me because this is important. Um, the nice thing about this is you get two installation kits that come with it and they also give you a free pair of wire strippers which is kind of cool and now these are the actual soft starts so we have one for each unit and this is pretty much what as they come you've got five wires that come out of them and we'll kind of go upstairs upstairs we'll go on the roof and i'll show you how to install these but i just kind of wanted to show you what these guys came they also um have made these much smaller they used to be about yay tall um so this is kind of a nice compact we've got our indication leds down here a lot easier to see than they are on the micro air and as a comparison you can see the difference this one is much smaller they are about the same height as height um but we're going to mount this underneath our exhaust fan on the unit. So it's kind of nice that it is smaller. But we'll go up top and we'll take a look at that. So I just wanted to do a quick unboxing before we go up there. Let me show you the tools that you also need to go along with that. Now, don't laugh. I have them in a bucket. And I'll explain the bucket here in a minute. So you'll need either a screw shooter or a drill. Um, that you can use to either take your panel off, but you'll definitely need it for in this bag. You'll see there's a couple little screws. Those are self tappers to adhere the soft start to the bottom frame of your unit. Um, you'll need a nice set of wire crimpers. They come with wire strippers, like I said, but I do like these. This, I want to note, these wires are already pre-stripped. Okay, so technically you don't need to have wire cutters, but I will probably shrink those up a little bit, so hence why we have wire strippers. You'll need a thing of electrical tape. Um, I always like to have a 11-in-1, 7-in-1 screwdriver, electrical screwdriver. Quarter inch ratchet, extension, and I believe it is a 10 millimeter. It might be a nine millimeter for the bolts up top. And we'll clarify that when we get up top. And by those bolts, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to lift up the frame of the exhaust fan and move it out of the way. And then we're gonna have another bolt to open the panel. The reason why I have a bucket is I put all my tools in the bucket. And that way, when I'm climbing up and down the ladder, I don't have to fumble with this. What I do is I we tie a little rope to this, and then Beth stands outside the door, and I just pull it up top. It's easy. That way, I'm not fumbling around. You don't risk falling off the ladder. Or if you're climbing up on the back of your RV, you're not falling off the back of your RV ladder. So, without further ado, we'll go upstairs, and I'll... Huh? I said upstairs again. <laughs> we'll go up on the roof, and uh, we'll take this all apart. I'll take the shroud off and I'll show you kind of a step-by-step -step process. This should only take about maybe 30 to 45 minutes. It's actually a pretty quick DIY and that's um, well worth it. And I'll kind of show you the amp draw 
we'll do uh we'll kind of split the video i'll show you an amp draw of before and after and why we want the soft star the soft the soft star will actually help you when you're mooch docking or you're on a 30 amp or even a a, a a 20 amp service so that um, it does just that it starts the ac very softly so you don't have that big 12 amp hit to the uh, service and depending on how hot it is it could be even more it could be upwards of 18 amps so we'll kind of show you that of how it pulls and then we'll show you what it does afterwards so let's go up top <laughs> Okay, so hopefully you can see this okay. We're going to turn on the front AC and just kind of show you that voltage pull, that amperage pull, when it fires up without a soft start. So as you can see, there is a pretty substantial amp draw, and now it's starting to back back down. So that's why we will... Uh, put a soft start on here and we'll show you what it does when the soft start starts up all right so before we go up on the roof most important thing you can do this one of two ways um, if you're still using some of your internal uh, 12 volt lights and so on I recommend doing this and that is to go in here and find where your ACs are and then you're gonna flip the breaker so we're gonna we don't have a mid zone, but we do have one in the living room, which is going to be one. We're going to shut that guy off and we're going to go find our AC on our second leg, which is going to be number nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Well, actually, I think it's that one because they double count these two as one. So nine will be our bedroom AC. Since we're working on both, we're gonna shut both of those breakers off so that there's no zappy zappy going up there. The other thing you can do is simple. Unplug your 50 or your 30 amp service plug for your shore power from that breaker. That way there's no power coming in um, while you're servicing that. Okay, so we're back up on top of the roof here. This is our Mach 8 Coleman. Um, it's low profile. It does normally have four screws on here. I just pulled those out, put them in our trusty little bucket. And I'm going to take this guy and we're going to set him over here. Now, here's our condenser coil. Our evaporator coil is underneath this. We're not going to mess with that guy yet. This is our exhaust fan. This is the fan I was talking about that we're going to mount our um, soft start underneath this. There are three screws. I'll have Beth kind of up and over here if we've got a bolt here here and here those are the ones that i believe are 10 millimeter um and we're gonna make sure and give you the actual dimension then this guy here we're gonna pull this guy off and that's gonna have our wiring diagram on the inside of that and that's crucial and i'll show you why here in a minute we're gonna need to get a number off of that then we'll go online We'll put that number in and soft start actually gives you the wiring schematic right there. So crucial that you find this number. But before we do that, I want to show you these guys right here. These here are your capacitors. Okay, now depending on what you're putting the soft start on, these ones are sealed. So there is no terminal on the end of them, but I will show you how we are going to go about and decharging these because they have a huge amp load to them and they will zap the crap out of you if you're not careful and if you don't do it right so i'll show you how to do that so first of all we'll pull this fan off we'll get it out of the way i'll pull that panel off and i'll show you that panel all right so before we get started we talked about our 11 one screwdriver i thought that was a 3 8 or a 10 millimeter I was up here prior and I did use this to get those nuts off, but it gets to be pretty tight in some of these areas. So that's why we opted for the quarter inch drive and it is a 10 millimeter. So we did verify that, that it is 10 millimeter. Okay, so I do like to take all my fasteners, whether they the screws for up top here, the nuts off the fan. I will put them all in our handy little bucket that we brought up with us. 
we pulled out the three bolts here we're just going to lift this guy up and put him over here now be careful because i just did this i forgot there is three of these little washers that actually sit right here and uh, two of them just rolled over onto my slide like luckily they rolled to my slide so here's the other two just remember those now we're gonna pull off this other 10 millimeter bolt real quick and put it in our bucket and we're gonna go oh, sometimes these guys are a little bit of a, a booger to get off as you can see right now all right so here is our let me turn it the right way for you here's our wiring diagram now you'll see down here in this corner there is a 1976 number that you're gonna have to find ours is Charlie 613 and I'll go inside and we'll post it here into the video of how to find that number and how to find your schematic so we're gonna pull that guy off to the side and this is the schematic this is the schematic for this unit so we'll go through this and we'll wire this all up as it is supposed to be um, I did laminate it just because I knew I'd be up here and instead of paper flapping around and for better uh, uh, videoing I can show you this guy now um, I think I called it a PCRV it's actually a PTCR that's this valve right here and I think that that was what was causing me some issues on the micro air and this guy kind of wires up a little different than that so hopefully we don't have that same issue um, we'll know pretty much right away so going back to this little guy we're going to use um, this red wire these two are going to kind of come off and go under here um, the yellow wire we're going to pull off of the board it's going to go up into wiring and we'll kind of give you a walk through and i believe the uh, black wire is going to come off which is down here and go to a blue wire so we've got some moving of wires around and we'll have some crimping to do as well but we talked about the capacitors and how to decharge those capacitors we have a start capacitor and we have a run capacitor um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to take these two wires off of that and we're going to follow them down which these are the two for our um, start capacitor so what i'm going to do i'm pull them to the side and we have one that comes up here and then we have this yellow one that comes down here and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull those off like so and you can see that they're shielded connectors I'm going to take my multimeter because your multimeter is set to uh, cage against this guy and we'll put it on our amps here and it's really simple you're going to take a lead you're going to put one in one side you put it in the other just like so and then you're going to reverse it and you're going to put it here and here and what that does is that breaks the voltage off of that off of that capacitor so we know that that guy is good so we'll plug these guys back in for right now so we know that where they go and don't fret if you can't remember where it goes remember that you have <laughs> i can't get that guy on there all right that you have this guy right here to know where all your wires go so we did our start capacitor now we're going to do our run capacitor and that's going to be the one that's going to have a little bit more of a punch so that's going to be our our brown wire our black wire and our red wire so that's going to be these three right here okay and these all kind of come into the same way that's why i know where they're at and basically we're going to do the same thing we're going to pull off these leads here and that's going to be this guy here 
Hey Beth, look, we still have another stink bug right here. Oh my heavens to Betsy. We picked up these stink bugs back in, we think September of last year, and they keep occasionally showing up. It's kind of funny. They're just randomly wherever. All right, so we have our three wires again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the black one. And then we're just gonna touch and touch. And then we'll put it into the brown one. And we'll touch and touch. And we'll put it in the red one. And touch. Ooh. And touch. All right, we have discharge. Oh, that fell out, so just to make sure. Don't want any big zaps. All right, so we have discharged that entire capacitor. So that is just as important as um, the, the, I'm having brain fart, sorry. That is just as important as the um, shutting off your power. So put everything back. And now what we are ready to do is we're ready to grab our um, a soft start roughly mount it where it's going to go and see how we're going to wire in the wires. So we'll need one of these guys. That's our installation kit. And we'll just grab this guy that's already open. Now keep in mind, at least on this Mach 8, that we have a lot of uh, volume from the fan. So we're going to want to try and, and route these wires to the ease <laughs> of keeping them out of the way so to speak so we're coming in here we're going to bring these guys in and up and we'll take a red wire and bring him in and up and then our yellow wire All right, so we're going to kind of pull all the slack up and out of here for right now. And that's going to probably work pretty good right where it's at. But before I commit to that, we're going to take this guy and we're going to set it back down like it's going to be when it's mounted. You got to be careful because this guy is the wires run up on top of him. All right, so I can actually move this guy probably right about there. Now, be mindful. You can see that he's out of the way here, but we need to see these three lights here. So you gotta keep that in mind when you're setting it up. Um, so that being said, I will probably turn it like so. And this way I can look over this way and see those lights. And then we'll zip tie those wires to this leg right here. And then we'll be fine coming in. So everything like that, I think is pretty good. We'll move that fan back out of the way and start wiring up. So coincidentally, when we went to pull the white wire off the compressor, the connector came off. And it's not the same connectors as everybody else has in here. I'm gonna move this stink bug. Oh, he's dead. Um, so apparently, again, this unit is new to us. It's not brand new. So somebody else was in here. So we're gonna put him in here and put a new connector on there. That way I know that if it doesn't work, it was my fault. Get a little tug tug. All right, we are good. So white is going to go to the blue wire. And we are going to take our electrical wire, or excuse me, electrical tape, and we're going to tape that connection because it uh, has the potential to lay against something and and short out, and we don't want that. Doesn't take a lot. You don't need to 
run 20 million loops around there as long as we don't have any bare metal across it that's all i care about we're gonna take the, sorry i had to bring but we're gonna take the black wire and we're gonna connect it to where the white wire just was and um put a terminal end on it and plug it into the board all right so this guy right here this is that ptcr valve we're actually going to pull that guy off and then we're going to pull these two wires off they kind of have a weird terminal um it is one of these guys so it's like a two in one so this one will go to the board and then that other one's on there it's already on there so or it, is, it should be and it's going to slide down just like so onto your board we're going to take that guy off but don't throw that guy away you might need it down the road so the wire that we took off of our start capacitor and tested a while ago we're actually going to pull that guy off and they request that you uh, cover that guy with tape so we are going to do just that we're going to pull off some tape again the reason we're taping this guy up is so it does not arc across so we're going to pull him aside set him over here out of the way and we're going to take our yellow wire and we're going to put a terminal on it and we're going to plug him in right there as well okay we're going to unhook our black compressor wire unhooked our black compressor wire again we just followed it from our compressor that way we know where it's at we're going to put a male end on our brown wire and we're kind of kind of pull this guys out of the loom so they're not all intertwined we're going to connect these we're going to wrap them with tape just like we did the others all right and so we're going to take our last red wire from our soft start we're going to plug it right back in where the black wire was and now our soft start is all wired up we'll show you the next step that we're going to do here in just a minute okay so we've got and we've taken everything we've kind of put it back together one thing that i do want to mention which helped us a lot is before you start this take a picture of your circuit board um, we do have another unit over there which you see we've already kind of started on but that has a heat pump this one does not so that diagram is actually different for that soft start so take a picture um, they say a picture is worth a thousand words it totally is in this instance um, but what we've done is we've loosely put everything back together we haven't tightened it down with bolts um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to have Beth go through the inside part, which is basically turn on the breaker um, and then set the thermostat to 55. And then we're going to kind of watch these LED lights and make sure everything works right. Okay, hon. On and set to 55. Okay, it's really loud, but you can see the light down there, which is what we wanted. We wanted a green LED. So, on the bottom of our instructions, it says that the green light should turn on, which is, means the compressor is running. And now we have to turn the AC on, set it to the outdoor temperature, and run for 30 minutes. So what we'll do is I'll radio down to Beth, because now we have the green light, and we'll have her set it, it is 75 out today. So she'll set it to 75 for 30 minutes, we'll set a timer, and then we can run it at a normal operating. All right, so we've gone and we have set it to our normal operating temperature. Um, excuse me, we've set it to the outside temperature. We set a timer for 30 minutes. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna let this cycle normally and it should do its job. That's how it kind of self-tests itself. And after 30 minutes, we'll set it back to, uh, well, actually what we'll do is after the 30 minutes, we'll disconnect the breaker again. We'll tighten down everything. We'll put button it all back together and then we'll run it normally. Now, 
what we're going to do is we're going to go up we're going to do our heat pump unit and which is a little different but basically the same thing um, there are a couple different things so i wanted to point those out real quick all right so while we're waiting on our um, 30 minute timer reset on the back unit we came up to the front unit which does have a heat pump and i'm going to kind of scroll down here and show you this was the schematic for the rear unit this is the schematic for the front unit so they did have a different 1976 number which we pulled off of that guy and you can see that this one's a little more in depth and what we'll do is again we have the breaker shut off we're going to kind of lift this guy sorry we're going to kind of lift that guy to the side and you can see that you know on the other one we didn't have wires here we didn't have wires there this guy wasn't there so there's a lot more here this is our reversing valve this is all part of our heat pump so a lot more involved in this guy but it's still the same exact um smart or soft start as the one in the back you know it's the same one all we're going to do is we're going to wire this guy up a little differently so that's why it's really important to pull this panel off and get your little number that is down here in the lower right corner and then you'll get the right schematic and like i said we'll show you that here in just a minute on how we do that okay so we're back here we've got everything fastened down little tricks if you have a magnet to set the um bolt on top or the nut on top of the bolt for the fan housing it'll help immensely or if you have somebody that has small hands that'll help but we've got everything fastened down we can see where everything is we can see our lights so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back downstairs we'll have beth turn on the breaker and then we'll set the unit to 55 and we'll make sure we get that green light once that green light comes on then we'll run it for 30 minutes at ambient temperature all right so we're gonna do a little shameless publicity here <laughs> when you get your soft start you'll get the little diagram it'll give you this address right here and then you'll want to open up that um, wiring diagram which I had showed you that panel where all the wires go and then you'll click on here ours is a Coleman it's a mock um, Mach 8 but that doesn't matter so this is what you're gonna want to look at and it kind of tells you here and it walks you through where to find that number okay and then once you find the model or the model number you're gonna click here and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring up all of these different model numbers to look at so the one that we had was a 1976 734 which is we already have it up here but I kind of want to just show you again and this is going to bring up the wiring diagram and it's going to give you directions here on what to do each step by step it's super easy um, you can get it in a PDF if you want and print it out that's what I did and that gives it to you here so like I said, this is super easy. Um, you just go to the website that they, they tell you in the uh, pamphlet that you get with your paperwork. And then you find that 1976 number. Like I said, we had this, the um, 734 for one of them, and then this was the other one. So the 734 was the one with the heat pump, and then this one was the one without the heat pump. Okay, so... We're obviously back inside. I'm going to grab the camera from Beth and she's gonna turn on the air conditioners and I'm gonna show you the different leg of how much amperage it pulls. You'll see it kind of go like two, five, eight, ten. 10. Um, it does go relatively quick, but that's okay because it's not going directly to like 19 or 18, depending on what type of AC you use, what kind of uh, condition it's in, so on and so forth. That amperage is always gonna be different, but you'll see the difference as we fire up these ACs individually. It's a top one. So you saw it go 4, 6, 11, 13, 14. Now it's going to work its way back down. Now she'll turn on the rear one. And it's going to be the lower number. And you'll see that as well. 
and it takes it just a minute six ten eleven so you can see the total right now we're at 25 amps so that being said we could run both air conditioners on a 30 amp circuit because it doesn't have that initial hit of high amperage and that's what would break a, a breaker you know trip your breaker um, and cause issues that way so smart uh, soft start is actually a great uh, you know tool to have um, it works very well and it does just that it, it slowly ramps it up even though it looked really fast compared to what it normally would do it's it's a slow ramp up and uh, it just it, it creates more options so like if you're at a park and they only have 30 amp you can still hook into you know a 30 amp with a 50 amp rig and use both your air conditioners you're not trying to shut off one thing to run this so you can start up your air conditioner so we highly recommend them um we've been really pleased with these soft starts they've worked fantastic they were easy to set up so if you guys have any questions please let us know hit us up down in the comments and if you guys like this type of video of kind of the diy and how to kind of do this yourself without paying a tech to do it hit us up in the uh you know the little bell that way you know when we're coming along hit that subscribe button and uh, as always thank you very much for watching and we'll see you guys next week bye bye everyone